Guess what? Oculus just released V37, the first update for the Oculus Meta Quest 2 of 2022, with some features when they're gonna start to be available from today. So without wasting any time, let's discover this update together in this video. Let's get into it. All right, so as always, this update is gonna start to roll out from today. That means that not everyone is gonna get it right away, but that means that, well, you're gonna get it very, very soon. So if it doesn't arrive in the second you're watching this video, well, don't sweat, it's gonna arrive, trust me. But now let's go through the change log step by step. First thing, app library. Now the Oculus apps, the meta apps, are not gonna be pinned at the top of the app library anymore. Instead, you're gonna be able to reorganize everything with also the filter and stuff. So that's good that everyone has the same chance to be on top of the list over there. And that was the first point. Second point is Link Sharpering Plus. They improved the Link Sharpering algorithm. That means that when you use PC VR games on the Oculus Meta Quest 2, well, the image is gonna be a little clearer than what it was before. They already added a sharpering filter in the last update, but right now they keep making it better and better, getting closer and closer every time to a native PC VR headset. That's always good. The next change is Stationary Guardian. From V37, when using Stationary Guardian, you're not gonna see the boundaries anymore, but it's gonna just fade in the pass through. So that means that you're always gonna see what's around you in that small area that is the one stationary. Now, this is one of the best and most interesting for me is the Horizon Home update. That means that finally, finally, you're gonna be able to move in uh, your environment in the Oculus Home. In uh, designated parts, you're not gonna be able to just go everywhere, but you're gonna be able to teleport in different parts of the environment. So yeah, you're not gonna have to create gigantic areas to actually explore the places, but you're gonna be able to go around. That's very good indeed because they're all 3D environments made very well and we were always stuck in the middle. Didn't make any sense at all. Right now you can just press the home button at the moment you close the menu and you're able to teleport around and turn around with snap and turn. So very nice indeed. I wish we were able to actually use locomotion around but that's a first step, I guess. Next change is in the menu with diagonal resize. So now you're gonna be able to resize your app to different heights and widths. Initially, this will be supported in an Oculus browser, in Oculus TV, files, and some 2D multitasking app currently available on the Quest. And then it's gonna expand to others. But the big change is actually the display bar. Now you're gonna find a little bar under your windows, and you're gonna be able to change the kind of view that you wanna have. There's gonna be a tablet view where the window is gonna be very close to you. And you're gonna have a desktop view where the window is actually gonna be further away and you're gonna be able also to use the multitasking to have uh, three different apps open at the same time. You use the bar with up, you have the desktop view and with down, we're gonna to get to the tablet view where all the windows in case of the browser are gonna to collapse together. Hopefully that will help productivity at Beats. And another thing that is gonna help productivity, if you have the right keyboard to do that, is actually the next update. With V28, they actually had this support for the Logitech Key 830, and the, you were able to just bring your keyboard in VR and work there and see your hands on it and everything it was very cool indeed. And now they added the support for the Apple Magic Keyboard. So you're able to bring it in VR in the same way and then interact with the end tracking with the different windows and stuff, something that really helps productivity. Now, hopefully they're gonna keep adding keyboards on that. It's just weird that they're going with the Apple keyboard when uh, if you play PC VR and stuff, you usually have a PC. Anyway, if you have an Apple Magic keyboard, now you can use it in VR. Congrats. And because we were talking about end tracking, this is another big update. There's an improved quick action menu. So when you actually pinch in your direction before you were just getting the regular Oculus menu out, now you're gonna have a quick shortcut with different things like recording, voice commands, and something coming out from that moment. And then you can um, decide which one to use or just go to the Oculus button again. That's very good indeed because it brings 
more possibilities to the end tracking that always felt a bit clunky. Instead, like this, it has a bit more functionality. Another big thing that I added is like the link sharing. So now you're gonna be able to share links from your Android device to your Oculus headset. And it's gonna be also integrated in the Explorer page that by the way, has been updated as well with this update. It's a bit different, a bit more useful it seems, uh, but yeah, you're gonna be able to use your Android device and share different links with games and stuff, and it's completely integrated in Android, using, of course, the Oculus app. So to do this, make sure that your headset is turned on and the Bluetooth is enabled on your phone, then open a website on your phone, click share, choose the Oculus app, open now, select your headset, and will automatically open the browser where you actually put your headset on. Again, this is just available for Android right now and it's gonna arrive on iOS soon. It's just weird that sometimes they have stuff just for iOS, sometimes just for Android. Well, just decide. And the last update of the V37 is actually some controller settings. It's only gonna be an experimental mode, by the way, but you're gonna be able to adjust the thumbstick dead zone. So uh, when you move it, well, you have to arrive to a certain percentage of the movement to actually get to the movement. This is good if your thumbsticks don't work very well. There's some drifting thing. I never heard about it on Oculus headsets. I never had it personally. I used those things a lot, but if it's something that you have, that is very useful indeed. I use it with my index because they have so much drifting there. And uh, so I can still play games with the thumbstick. It worked around in that case, but it's good that they put it down here because yeah, someone need it. It's available now. But anyway, this was V37. I think it was a great update with many different things. I love the fact that now finally we can move around the home environment. I wish we could, again, use locomotion, but I think that it's pretty good. The link sharing seems like a good thing to have, uh, but we have to see if it's actually useful besides some just browser links or something like it. Overall though, a nice update, a great first update for 2022, and they said that many more are coming and there's so many more features that they wanna add. What I'm very curious about is the link sharpening plus, Hopefully it gets much better because I still prefer using PC VR, but yeah, it's getting pretty good over there, link as well. Let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Did you try the link sharpening by the way? Do you think that is good enough or we need even more improvements? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like if you didn't like the video, like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you love the channel, the join button there, a little further. Also the Patreon. Thanks for all the patrons that have joined the channel, of course. And uh, yeah. That's all. I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.